Global markets continue to witness the adverse effects of the global coronavirus pandemic, while others have seen a gradual rise in activities with the easing of lockdown. Andrew Saku, stockbroker and security analyst at Capital Care Trust and Securities Limited, joins me now as he brings us to speed on the activities of the stock market. Good day, Andrew. Yeah, good afternoon, Irene. Good afternoon. Can you give us an insight on the activities of the market? What sectors were most hit by the pandemic? Oh, well, generally speaking, uh, today we have had a good show, you know, in the market space. As a matter of fact, the entire week has been characterized by uh, posit positivity in terms of uh, volume trends, and the price accretion across board. And um, I dare say that all sectors have been positively impacted in the course of this week. We've continued to see some sort of rallying indicators uh, against all odds. And I think that is largely because, um, you know, some weeks earlier, the entire market was, you know, on its belly. But we're beginning to see some uh, gradual restoration of values across both. So, uh, of course, we do recall that our market is largely driven by the likes of the financial services industry and uh, the consumer goods and the industrial sector. So these particular sectors have continued to enjoy some form of rallying in terms of their price uh, relationships. So um, in terms of the negatives, we've seen a bit of it showing up in the oil and gas sector, but that hasn't been very pre predominant. So it hasn't really impacted the market uh, very much significantly in the negative. Now, if there's one thing we're certain of is the, imp the impact of news on the stock market. Since, for example, Lagos is the, its uh, lockdown requirement, what have you seen in the market? What has changed? Um, interestingly, the market never went to sleep, uh, even though there was lockdown. The market had remained uh, on its upbeat tempo in terms of uh, activity. Um, what we're beginning to see is a little, you know, tonic to what was already on the board. And uh, like I said before, you check out volumes, you check out values. We've continued to see, uh, you know, some remarkable uh, positive trend in these numbers. I think that um, uh, in spite of the lockdown, <laughs> because the market will never went to sleep or was neither lockdown or so, um, investors have continued to remain agog in their patronage of the market space. Now, this sounds like good news, right? But what are the current preferences of investors? Well, like I said before, the, the general uh, uptake in the market has been um, characterized by stocks basically in the banking space. Um, you know, if you take the tier one banks, Access, Zenit, GTB, UBA, uh, Frost Bank, you know, uh, and Guarantee, of course, uh, they are all in the uptick. And I think in terms of both volume and values, they have led the market significantly. The industrial space has also not been left out on the park. Um, so we're seeing Dangote Cement, for example, you know, also enjoying some mileage in terms of both volume and then value. So on the whole, I think investors are beginning to see that, look, yes, the prices of most of these uh, stocks went down, but there's still intrinsic values in them going into the future. And they're beginning to cherry pick what level of capital flight is expected in the market in the coming weeks? Uh, capital flight, uh, as, as you do know, <laughs> capital will always find expression in the places that it's most needed. What we have seen basically is for you know investors to begin to uh, reject their portfolio and even the um, areas of their concentration uh, by and large, even before the COVID issues came, investors, particularly the FBI, FBIs, we are already beginning to reposition their portfolios against the backdrop of the winning performance in the oil uh, industry. And you know that the COVID-19 issues have actually accentuated the concerns around that. 
of course, you also see that the you know government has had to tweak you know the budget benchmark twice as we speak. So basically, what we continue to see is the delight of an average investor, aside from capital flight, is whether or not they are getting the kind of value they have in any location. So I do not expect any significant departure from the level of uh, uh, patronage that we're experiencing in the market now. I think what has actually happened, and that informs my view, is the fact that you look at average daily trading is still in the region that was post-COVID-19. So if there's going to be any capital flight at this point in time, it will certainly be for investors who think they probably just want to hold on to cash. Oh, great. So is this a good time to sell or buy? And why would you, why if it's a good time to sell or buy? That's, that, that's a million dollar question. Buy and sell is the character of the market any day. So any day you want to sell or buy, it's a good day. The issue is not when to sell or buy. The real issue is what is your objective. And once you've achieved your objective, what the market gives you, you the freedom to enter and to exit. So what Sorry, sector would you that. suggest that investors should possibly consider this period? Yeah, I, I gave a basket of names earlier, you know, uh, in answer to one of your earlier questions. Um, I, I think that the average stock out there in the market space, especially the banking stocks, hold great promise, you know, for an average investor. You can also take a look at the consumer names. Um, you know, my, my point is most of the stocks have actually suffered a decline in their values. So by the time you have uh, a discussion with your uh, invest, investment guide or stockbroker or analyst, they'll be able to point you along your objectives. Quite a number of them uh, are, are very attractive. If you look at today's price list, you discover that a whole lot of uh, you know stocks posted positive gains. That is because, excuse me, that's because investors are actually still looking at the values and believe that there is promise in this. So you, you won't be too wrong if, if you do some picking at this point. Andrew Saku, it's always a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. Great pleasure here. Certainly. Thank you.